All right, margin of error. Here is a for, here is a formula. Here's the thing with margin of error. Unfortunately, there are a couple of different formulas. This is the formula that we're going to use. Uh, if there were a question on your EOC, they may give you this formula. They may give you a different formula. Use whatever formula they give you, but we're going to use this one right now because, like I said, there are several different formulas for margin of error. We're just going to use this simple one right here. Okay? So the formula is plus or minus 1 over the square root of n. Have you all ever paid attention? Usually around political election time, they'll report, you know, such and such percent support this candidate, and down at the bottom, you'll always see, see like plus or minus 3%. That's what that plus or minus 3% is. It's the margin of error. It's saying, well, according to our survey, this many percent supported this candidate, but we only took, you know, 250 people and we're trying to apply this conclusion to the entire population, so it's probably not exactly this percent, but it is most likely within this range of percent. So let's look at that right here. In a survey of 1,600 people, 75% said that they go to the grocery store once a week. What is the margin of error? Okay, it is simply plus or minus 1 over the square root of n is still the number in your sample. So 1,600 people. So 1 over the square root of 1,600 is plus or minus 0 0.025. And that is a percent. Well, no, that's not the percent. That's the decimal. Sorry, that's the decimal. We got to convert it to percent form. Sorry. So that's the decimal. So in percent form, it's plus or minus 2.5 percent. Excuse me. Okay, so the margin of error is 0 0.025 or 2.5 percent. So from that, we can get the likely range of the actual percentage of people. So we take 75% and we subtract 2.5. We take 75% and we add 2.5. So the actual percentage is likely somewhere between 72.5% and 77.5%. It might be less, it might be a little more, but somewhere in that range is most likely the actual number of people that go to the grocery store once a week. Okay. Example two, in a survey of 250 high school students, 90% said that they spend at least three hours a day on social media. What is the margin of error and a likely range of the actual percentage? Sorry, I added this one as well. There was only one example, so I added another one. So let's find the margin of error. One over the square root of our number. We get 0 0.063, so that is 6.3 plus or minus 6.3%. So our margin of error here is larger. So what's the difference between these two examples? The sample size. If the sample size is bigger, the margin of error is smaller. If you have a smaller sample size, there's more margin for error. If you don't survey as many people, there's more uh, room for there to be a mistake in your calculation. What if you had a biased sample? Your margin of error goes up if you don't have enough uh, in your sample. So we have a larger margin of error here. So 90 minus 6.3, 83.7% to 96.3% is the likely range of the actual percentage of students, of high school students that spend at least three hours per day on social media. I'm just curious, do you think that's a low number or a high number? The three hours, the three hours. Low? I was curious. 